find they've got to find a way to get yards after the catch. Easy completions for McSorley. And continue the momentum down here. Look at Barkley, by the way. You know, for a guy who's known nationally, he's played the best football of anyone in the country. In a game where he hasn't performed that well, he's still so selfless. Out there, lead blocking for his teammates, doing everything. First down from the 15. Barkley over the left side gets a few. Kenny Willick is in there with Joe Bocci. Second and seven. They dump it off. Gesicki accelerates ahead for four. So third down and three for Penn State. So hit the tight end, Gesicki. Trying to get McSorley back into rhythm with some underneath throws. And a manageable third down for the Nittany Lions. You know it's going to be tight coverage. Look at the advantage in the mismatches. Gesicki at 6'6". Six, six. He's a guy that you'd like to be able to throw the football up to and give him an opportunity to make a play on it. Deshaun Hamilton's a guy that's always good coming back to the football on the corner routes. He's in the slot to the top. Throw the fade. Joan Johnson knocked away at the last moment by Lane. That is quite a matchup. The 6'4 Johnson against the 6'3 Lane who stuck his hand in at the last moment. He needed every bit of the length. And you can see Juwan Johnson try to rip by Lane, but Justin Lane so to get a hand in on the football at the last second. Really good recovery by Lane. Just not a favorable match of something that Penn State would like to go to. Been extremely effective this year. Scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Out there. So they bring Tyler Davis side. It was 30 of 32 over his first two seasons. He is 7 of 14 this year. This one right there. And Penn State has its first points of the second half. Time for a game break. We go back to Los Angeles with Greg Wolf. Joe, thanks. We'll check in on the Pac-12 Stanford in Washington State. You can see it on Fox Business Network and Fox Sports. Go Luke Falk earlier in the game. Became the Pac-12's all-time leading passer here on fourth and inches. Picked off by Bobby Okariki. 52-yard pick six. Stanford. On top, 21-17. By the way, guys, it started snowing in the Palouse. Joe, Brady, back to you. Uh, I'll trade you. <laughs> right? I mean, when it gets to be this cold, you'd almost prefer it to get 10 degrees colder or so, so it's not as sloppy. Yeah, as a player, you hate to be sitting there in between drives on the sidelines, wet, and it's cold out. Get, match that with a little bit of wind. You'd much rather have it be snowing. The wind that was blowing left to right early on in the game. I think it shifted some and is more right to left now. So Tyler Davis will be kicking with that wind to his back. Whenever wind is left, it's died down. Connor Hayward has had a couple of nice returns today. Drops this one and will take an eight. Well, this one finishes at 7.30 Eastern on Fox. We head down the road to Ann Arbor, Minnesota and Michigan, battling for the Little Brown Jug. The 96th time they face off of that. There are a lot of trophy games, especially in the Big Ten, but that is the oldest. One of the more coveted ones in the Big Ten. The quarterback Brandon Peters, freshman of Michigan. He'll get his first collegiate start this week. Just seen the struggles of that Michigan offense. Trying to go to the fresh, maybe get things jump started. For Brian Lewerke back out there. Very sharp on the last drive, going five for six to put the Spartans in front. 
On the 25-yard line, they go off play action and have a wide open White, but it's underthrown and incomplete. White had broken behind the defense, but Tariq Castro Fields recovered on a badly underthrown ball, second down. The work he missed a number of deep balls last week versus Northwestern. He overthrew them this time, never really got his feet set, didn't get his body momentum going into the throw. One of the reasons for the underthrown football. Pressure coming out of the secondary, picked up. Into the flats they go with a flag down. Scott has four or five, tackled by Manny Bowen. But a flag in the backfield on a day where Michigan State has been heavily penalized. This could be a hand to the face, like it might have been on Luke Campbell, their right tackle. Personal foul, face mask, offense number 62. Penalized half the distance to the goal line. Second down. You're right. You can see it was right off, right off the ball. Watch his right hand. And you can see it gets up into that face mask and grabs on and pulls it down. That's the difference between hands to the face and obviously a face mask on an offensive player. It's the manner in which he used it. Seven penalty on Michigan State, and a lot of them have been with this very inexperienced offensive line. They've got two freshmen. Two guys that are in their first full seasons as starters. Only one veteran in the center, Brian Allen. Really across the board, this Spartan team young. On second and long, pressure's picked up momentarily. Lewerke runs out of time and goes down. Parker Cothran finished him off after he got a couple. And it'll be third down in about 20. When Penn State brings pressure, typically they flush the quarterback out or they get to the quarterback. And part of that equation is because their secondary does such a good job in coverage. You're sacrificing an extra guy in coverage in order to put pressure on the quarterback. They've been effective so far with it now in third and 20. You'd imagine it would be somewhat of a conservative call given where they are, but Phil Davis has come up with a number of big plays for them so far today. Yeah, in the touchdown drive, they converted third and 19 and third and 11. Lewerke will take off. He needs the 35. He hurdles his way into the arms of harm. Brandon Smith brings him down. It's fourth and five. He was looking for Felton Davis, but again, once again, good coverage by the Penn State secondary. Lewerke merely just adding yards onto this punt. That's a big stop for Penn State. You kind of felt like Michigan State was starting to garner some of the momentum in this game coming out from the break, then coming out from halftime. Again, if you just happen to be joining us, this game was delayed by Lightning for three hours and 23 minutes. High snap, pulled down. Hart Barker with a nice job to corral that and hit a line drive that Tompkins watches bounce inside the 30. Penn State back on offense, and before they run their first play, we check in again with Bruce Feldman. Guys, for all the remarkable feats that we see from Saquon Barkley, a couple of days ago I had asked him, so what's your favorite highlight that you've had this season? You know, there's hurdling guys and stopping and starting. He goes, you know, it's probably the block against Iowa. You know, the one that uh, enabled them to throw the game-winning touchdown in the last play. I was like, but you don't show up in the stat sheet for that. He goes, yeah, but that made the difference and helped us win the game. It helped Trace make the throw, and that's all that matters. We won that game. Walk-off win, 21-19, as Juwan Johnson had the game-winning touchdown from McSorley. He's a very selfless leader. As you hear from that story from Bruce. Drive begins at the 30. McSorley steps into a clean pocket. Heaves one deep with blown coverage. It is a Penn State touchdown. DeAndre Tompkins, a 70-yard home run to put Penn State in front. He's not a thrower, he's a launcher. You're gonna see basically a double post concept, and Josiah Scott ends up falling down to the top of this route, and Tompkins is all alone by himself, just has to focus on catching the football, not hitting his head on the goalpost. That's what this offense has really been. A bunch of huge plays and 
some of the Michigan State defense. They haven't really given up a bunch of big plays this year. They've been one of the better defenses in the country in that regard. But facing one of the best offenses in the country at producing them. A 70-yarder from McSorley to Tompkins. That brings this third quarter to a close. What does the fourth quarter have in store for East Lansing? 24-21, Penn State in front. Back on Fox College Football, presented by Volkswagen. Back and forth we go in this second half. Trace McSorley, now 65 total touchdowns, tying Daryl Clark's school record. But that 70-yarder to DeAndre Tompkins. Penn State in front, 24-21, getting ready to start this fourth quarter. Who would have thought, on a day like this, both quarterbacks would be over 300 yards and neither team would have even 70 yards on the ground. Here comes Hayward, Michigan State to start around the 25. Take a look at our Ford Unstoppable Player of the Day. Felton Davis, nine catches, 153 yards. And yeah, we take a look at some of his highlights from today, even in wet and cold conditions. Another good stop, not the Penn State defense, not even a wet football, the rain. Still to make the diving catches and plays to help Michigan State get on top. Penn State since taking back the lead, but well, Davis is going to be a guy that I think if, if Sparty wants to come back in this one, he's going to be a big part of that comeback. And at the end of that kickoff, uh, illegal block all the way, kicking team number four, 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. It's an interesting call on the kicking team on the legal block. You can see right there at the end. Huh. All right, but it's a 15-yard penalty that moves it to the 41, and the Spartans trying to answer back have good field position. Instead of L.J. Scott, it's Gerald Holmes. And it's Lewerke looking to throw. Scans the field, gets through his progression, and throws incomplete. Wanted Matt Siebert, back up tight end, but was well short, second and ten. Past two throws now from the work. You saw the underthrown football that was almost intercepted on the last drive. That one right there. I've seen that so far from him really today. For the most part, he's done a pretty good job of giving his tight ends and wide receivers opportunities to catch the football. Prior to coming to Michigan State, the last time that he had played in a wet game was as a third grader in Seattle. His family moved to Phoenix when he was 12. Chaka Tony got a great jump off of the edge, but was picked up. And White, it's cracked at the 45 and a gain of four. Crowd seeing that great jump that Tony got, wondering why there wasn't a flag. They're down six for Michigan State. That's why he leads their team in sacks, and that's exactly what he's in the game for, to provide that speed off of the edge. It was close. Redshirt freshman of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's a guy that really pops on film when you watch him. He's got long arms, a lot of speed. Steinem is a linebacker. Put his hand in the ground and letting him wreak havoc at defensive end. Four-man rush on third down. Lewerke throwing a slam for Davis, who goes behind him and makes the catch. Not an easy ball to grab, even in nice conditions. He's got his 10th catch of the day to keep the drive alive. Simple slant route, but it's Davis's ability to twist his body and torque it back to corral the football for the conversion. What a catch. And now a career high 10 catches for 164. Makes it first and 10 of the Penn State 41. He's the only upperclassman of this wide receiver group, and he's really stepped up and been the leader that Michigan State hoped he would be this season. Yeah, more than doubling his production from his first two years. The worky off play action rolls and throws. That is caught for a first down, spreading the wealth now. That's Matt Dotson, the seldom used tight end for a dozen. Only a second catch of the season, the true freshman, and you're going to see him kind of lead block and then release out. Looked like they were trying to set something up on like a jet sweep, but nice little wrinkle in design for the Spartans. A 
the 29. Sticking through the air. Incomplete over Ryzen's head, second and 10. Penn State brings such a variety of coverages and pressures. It seems like every other play, someone different is blitzing, or bringing those dogs from the linebacker position. They give you a different look as far as coverage. That time they actually rolled the safety. Marcus Allen ended up playing cover two to one side. Ended up getting the corner playing the deep half on the other side. A lot of things it's tough to see as a quarterback post snap. High risk, high reward. They're top ten in takeaways and sacks. They bring pressure again. Lewerke hits a crossing white, who's got five, and a nice tackle in the open field by Amani Uruwarie. There's a the defensive coordinator, Brent Pride. What you hope when you're bringing some of that exotic pressure is that it doesn't break you over the top. And so far today, there have not been too many blown coverages. On third down, I would imagine uh, once again, they'll bring some sort of pressure. And their secondary is held up on the back end in coverage. Go-to guy from Michigan State, none other than Felton Davis. He's split to the top on third and fourth. Lewerke stands in. Now escapes. Throwing for Davis. He's got it. First down, Michigan State. Did he catch it? Was he able to get his arms underneath between the ground and the football? There's no doubt about that. And Penn State actually rolled the coverage to that side, meaning they had a cornerback and a safety responsible for Davis. But once Lewerke left the pocket, Davis was able to find the soft spot in that coverage. For his 11th catch of the day. First down and 10 inside the 20. They pump short and floated into coverage. Incomplete. Threw it up for Cody White, who is double covered by Apke and Uruwarie. Second and ten. Yitor Gross Matos ended up getting pressure on the worky. That was a dangerous throw. Talked about, about the defense and that risk reward and pressure. Well, sometimes that happens with double moves. What they ran with Cody White it was a little stop and go, and the risk is as a quarterback, that ball comes out before the wide receiver really gets going again. So you're just kind of hoping and praying the defense falls for it. The wide receiver ends up getting open. White coming in motion. They flip it to him. He gets a block. And gets five or six. Gerald Holmes was the man leading the way for him. Spotted at the 14-yard line. Third down coming up for Michigan State, where a field goal would tie it. That's technically a pass there, and that is eight consecutive throws from this Michigan State offense. got to love those jet sweep passes. Mm -hmm. There's really no downside to it because when you flip it forward, if he doesn't catch it, it's not like a fumble. It's just an incompletion. And the flip side of that is it pads your stats. <laughs> Didn't get much easier. On third down, Lewerke drops and throws incomplete. Miscommunication with Daryl Stewart. And the field goal team will come out trying to tie it with 11 minutes left. Lewerke hot talking with Stewart afterwards. And we'll watch him as he drops back. See how he looks to the right? It was Kevin Givens who dropped underneath. Lewerke got back around. You know, he wants to put that on Daryl Stewart, but I don't know that he had a great vantage point looking back over that side of the field. I think he might just be frustrated in general because he couldn't find that throw to Davis. So it's Matt Coughlin from 32 yards to try and tie the game. And he does. Whispering by that upright that he hit twice in the overtime loss last week. With 10.56 to go in his top 25 matchup in East Lansing. Penn State and Michigan State locked at 24. Fox College Football is sponsored by State Farm, here to help life go right. And by Ford Commercial Vehicles, built for tough. A game that started at noon is now under the lights and tied at 24. Early on in the fourth quarter, these two Big Ten East teams, Michigan State, if it wins out, wins the East and will play for a Big Ten championship. 
Penn State needs some help. They're getting some right now over in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes landed on the Buckeyes, believe it or not. Take on Barkley will take an ease. Penn State to begin to the 25-yard line. And, Bruce, we saw Penn State in the initial college football playoff ranking sitting at seven. But the big thing is that there are four one-loss teams ahead of them. That's right. Guys, if they can somehow pull this game off, this is a huge upset that's obviously going on in Iowa City. They need, to me, they, the biggest thing they would need, to obviously, beyond keep winning in themselves, is for Ohio State to get knocked out of there. If Ohio State gets one more loss after today, I think Penn State has, has a better shot than a lot of people might think just because if they can run the table, they're going to probably play a really good Wisconsin team. And I think there's just, you know, Pac-12 issues. I don't think we're going to have a Pac-12 team. And we'll see what happens with Brady's alma mater, Notre Dame. That's going to be the biggest thing. Penn State needs to win the Big Ten. If they don't, I don't know how favorable their schedule stacks up to Notre Dame's. McSorley will dump it off. Here's Gasicki hurtling across the 30, showing off some of that old volleyball athleticism for a nice first down pickup, and we check in with Greg for a game break. Joe, thanks. Elsewhere in the Big Ten, number six, Ohio State in Iowa. This game was tied at 17. Nathan Stanley, two-yard touchdown to Drake Ulick. Hawkeyes have put up 28 straight points. They lead 45-17, fourth quarter. Joe, Brady, back to you. Nate Stanley, five touchdown passes on the day. Second and short, Barkley with a first down run. Now Penn State, if they win today, and Ohio State loses that one, they will be big Michigan State fans next week when the Spartans go down to Columbus. Because remember, Penn State still needs Ohio State to lose twice. Twice, yeah. Because they own the tiebreaker. The tiebreaker's head-to-head -head play. But again, you got to take care of business here today. You're in a dogfight on the road with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. And again, the Spartans, you know, they control things. If they're able to win this one, they'd be sitting in the driver's seat going into Columbus next week. A lot at stake as this one rolls on. Inside of 10 minutes in a tie game, and it's McSorley rolling and throwing for Hamilton. Let's the blocks develop and cuts against the grain for six. Deshaun Hamilton, hours ago, hours and hours ago, started the scoring with a touchdown reception. That's his seventh catch today. It's just a glorified screen. And a three wide receiver set. Hamilton was the inside wide receiver. Juwan Johnson was on the outside, kind of helping lead and blocking. It was only a one-man route. Jaquan Barkley's gotten loose once today. Takes the fake here. And a diving catch from Jawan Johnson for a first down. Had some issues holding on to the football, but he's got that. His first of the day. Watch as Cooper drops out. So he drops more vertical. He doesn't get enough width. If he drops a little bit wider, you can get in the passing lane and affect that throw. But look at the hands, the extension by Johnson to make the catch and get the first down. Really worked on those hands in the offseason. Was mostly a special teams player his first season. Only two catches last year. Having a breakout year for the Nittany Lions here in 2017. First down from midfield. McSorley pumps one way, steps up and heaves it. It's picked off. Second of the day by David Dow. And the Spartans have it. David Dow steps up once again with a big time interception the ball was just a little bit thrown behind that allowed Dow to get his hands in on it but watch they try to set up a bubble screen and then it's downfield to Blacknell but you see Dow's with him step for step and once he gets to his hip little tug but the ball is under throw but sorely has to put that deep over the top he typically has in the past big time momentum change for Michigan State Penn State, one of the top teams in the country in turnover margin, trailing 3-0 in this game today. And Michigan State coming in, that had not been a strength for them. But this team's totally reversing course from what's been the story for the first two months this year. Sorely, five interceptions entering today's game. Three already. Lorky looking to respond quickly and runs his way for a first down. One of the things that 
Penn State really struggled with was sudden change against Ohio State. When things went poorly, very quickly it got worse. And James Franklin pointed to that as the biggest issue in the loss last week. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised that Michigan State didn't try to pick up their tempo a little bit. Just, again, going back to last week when they were behind versus Northwestern, they were able to tie it up to go into overtime. They find more production out of these three wide receiver sets like we see them in now. I know they want to be a power football running team, but with Lewerke, I don't think you need to be. First down and 10. Lewerke throws, and what a one-handed catch by Cody White. A highlight reel play for the freshman for 17. And what can you say about this true freshman class, the way they've stepped up? Look at these stench, the one hands, and then just pushes the football by as he can, continues down the field. And there's been plays to be made. Michigan State wide receivers have come up with it. First down from the 39, and against pressure, they beat it with another true freshman, but a drop off of the hands of Ryzen with two really nice catches on a touchdown drive in the third quarter. But the good thing to me on that play, if you're a Michigan State fan, is Brian Lewerke, he's seeing it. He's seeing some of the pressures from Penn State better now, and he's finding those quick answers like we saw him do at the very beginning of this game. They've changed up some of their looks, and now bringing what's called a blitz zone two. I mean, they're playing a two-deep zone in behind the guys pressuring, and they're actually dropping out a defensive lineman to play the curl zone area, which is typically the spot you see a cornerback. Brian Lewerke's school record 445 yards last week said he gained a ton of confidence and has carried it into this one. Pressure's picked up over the middle and incomplete. And the flag flies in late. Davis had gotten a step on Uruwarie and draws the flag for a first down. It's really the, the tugging at the top of the route that I think drew the flag. You see the officials convening about it. Pass interference, defense number 21, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And Felton Davis has been unstoppable today. And take a look as Uru Warrior ends up just kind of tugging there on his hip and really interferes with his ability to make the extension we've seen Felton Davis make throughout the game today as we head into tonight. Yeah, that's how, how long that? it's been. <laughs> it was dark out when we got here for a different reason. <laughs> First down from the 24. It's all worth it, though. Tied at 24 and a half of a ball game. Lewerke looking downfield, but running out of time. Now a man comes open and drops it. It was the tight end Sokol. It would have been first and goal. Instead, second and 10. And it was a perfect play design. You had the play action pass, so a little bit of misdirection. But you know, he sells to the outside. He comes back inside to the soft spot of the zone coverage and just can't hang on. A lot of times in these wet conditions, you're taught to body catch it if you're not confident with the, the tackness on those gloves, but that didn't work there. Well, it might help if you don't have grass on your helmet. Yeah, right. Should get rid of that. Second and ten. Lewerke throwing down the sideline. Davis can't get it. It's brought in by Oruwarie. What an interception by Amani Oruwarie. We've had so many scenarios today along the sideline. Was he in bounds on this one? No question. And he maintains control as he goes down to the ground to complete the process of the catch. Possession, feet down in bounds, and surviving the ground. Oru Warrior does exactly that. My question is, was it not a false start? There was something before the snap of the football. It looked like either someone was offsides or someone jumped. The officials didn't pick up on it. And you talk about a sudden flip in things, a drop inside the five yard line from Matt Sokol, and then one play later, an interception as the football with the Nittany Lions with seven and a half left. Barkley has room. And has four on first down, second and six. Let's go back to what you're talking about. Yeah, take a look at LJ Scott on the left side of the offensive line. 
See them stem? I mean, there's no doubt about it. That's a full yeah. start. I don't know how they missed that. And it would have played, obviously, to the benefit of Michigan State based on how the play turned out. Rarely do you beg to have a flag thrown on you, but <laughs> I think they're wishing that it had been. Second and six, inside seven. McSorley gets hit and swallowed up. He lost two. Surrounded by green shirts. Willikis was there. Dowell was there. And Recon Williams as well. Third down and eight for the Nittany Lions. They brought Dowell off the edge. That kind of created a wall almost. And there was just nowhere for McSorley to go. Penn State today has struggled on third down. Third down and eight. Guy who stepped up has been Deshaun Hamilton. You wonder if Barker will get involved. Nick Sorley throws underneath. Gasicki's wide open and climbs the ladder for a first down and then some. Just a complete drop in coverage. Watch as he releases out. And it's because Justin Lane, once he pressures off the edge, someone's got to be responsible for Gasicki. Look at him as he goes, almost like he's going for a spike. The guy loves to jump. Good surge from the offensive line on a first down run of five for Barkley. You mentioned Gasicki spike in a volleyball. He's a star volleyball player. In fact, his first recruiting letters from Penn State were from the men's volleyball staff. He was a star basketball player, dunked when he was in junior high. A big time athleticism from a guy that is widely considered the top NFL draft prospect at tight end. Second and five for Penn State. McSorley well protected. That one is caught by Johnson. Running the corner out, crossing the 40, and a flag down in the backfield on this 20-yard gain. And that's going to be on Kenny Willekes. It might be a roughing the passer. Looked like that hit was a little bit late. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 48, low hit on the quarterback. Finalized 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. We're going to see Kenny Wilkis coming at the very end. Clearly hits McSorley low, which as a quarterback, when you're in the pocket, you get that protection. You're considered defenseless in that case. The throw and catch. And the thing that's tough to see here is Barkley released out into the flat. That really pulled up Justin Lane to create that window for Johnson the back end for the big completion on the corner route. Clearly, Mark D'Antonio not upset. The penalties, as you talked about earlier, still plaguing them here late in the fourth quarter. Eighth of the day on this young Spartans team. First down from the 38. McSorley rolling to his right. Being chased, lets it go. Dangerously and incomplete through the hands of Andrew Dow. His brother David has intercepted McSorley twice today. about this close to being an interception. The Dow brothers really got a beat on Trace McSorley today. Twin brothers out of Ohio. 5-0-1 left to go, tied at 24. I think some more people have filled in here as this game's gotten really good into the fourth quarter. People that had left during the delay. McSorley pressured and has to throw it away. There is nobody in the area. And you figure a flag's going to come out. I don't think he broke the tackle box. Yeah, there it is. This is intentional grounding. Intentional grounding. Offense number nine. Ball got past the line of scrimmage, but the quarterback was still in the pocket. Ball's placed at the spot of the pass. Lost it down. Third down. So right about there is the tackle box. Kind of on an angle almost, but as he turns, I mean, he, he really does almost get outside the car. Great usage of your telestrator, Brady. I'm trying to use as many of the instruments, instruments there as we can. And tell Carly Willis knew exactly what it was. Third down and 18. A lot of big swings in this game.
Michigan State trying to give an exotic look here. They wind up dropping eight into coverage. McSorley throwing sideline, and it's a reception for Gasicki, getting him close to a first down. They got 15, and it's fourth and three. So at this point, I mean, it's against the wind. Now the wind's not playing too much of a factor at this point, but looks like they're going to go for it. With four and a half left. You cannot let Trace McSorley out of the pocket. Play clock inside 10. On fourth down and three. He throws the slam and it's incomplete. Tompkins couldn't hang on and Penn State turns it over on down. 5 left to go. They had what they wanted on the slant with an open Tompkins, who has a 70-yard touchdown today, but couldn't hang on to this one. And so Michigan State in a tie game will have it with their sophomore quarterback Brian Lewerke when you come back. Fox College football is sponsored by Coors Light. Key to a good offense is a refreshing defense. Climb on. It's been a weird day, but a good day. And he's Lansing. The game broken up by three and a half hour weather delay is tied at 24. And Brian Lewerke, fresh off his record setting performance last week, another good day today. And another chance to lead a big drive here in the fourth. Lewerke on time and throws low. Did Davis pluck that thing off the ground? You bet he did. For a gain of nine, his 12th catch of the day. They brought a pressure off of him, which gave him the cushion. And it's just his ability to go get his hands underneath the football. And look at the hand-eye coordination, the ability to stop his body. That six foot three frame. Make the catch. Now Brian Lewerke throwing for those 445 yards last week was at his most impressive, tying the game with a last minute drive. They hand it off to Scott. He's got a first down. Up to the 45 as the clock winds inside a three and a half. If you're Michigan State, you're still going to run the going to want to run the football. A little over three minutes left.